The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. This is Africa Diaspora Connect. Join us as we take the journey from the motherland to America. We share our experiences and learn from them. Here is our host, Kevadi Gaturu. Oh my goodness, I survived the snowstorm today, I did, oh my god, the nor'easter, terrible weather. You know, I keep telling myself, Ben, I'm going to move out of New England. I, I keep saying I'm done with these winters. It's been th- over 30 years and I'm still here. What the hell am I thinking? Oh, God, I'm a tropical man. I'm a tropical brother. Welcome back. Africa Diaspora Connects, uh, recording from Studio 21. As you heard, I'm your host, the same guy, doing a different thing every day. Journey, it's all about journeys, journeys, journeys. Where are we going on this episode? You know what? We all have visions of grandeur. All of us Africans, immigrants, coming into these United States of America. Uh, I've talked about this in my intro. Those long hours at that embassy praying, the vigils, our mothers praying and fasting and hoping that we get this thing called a visa. And those of us that make it here uh, think we've arrived, but it's not that simple. To assimilate, to acclimate yourself is in of itself another journey that has no script. You learn as you go. Immigration. Immigration is a hot topic, um, and, and, and everyone of us can attest to, everyone has their story of what they've had to overcome, what they've had to endure um, from getting the visa, that elusive green card, and then someday, you know, it's right here, you know, the allegiance, you know, as a U.S. citizen. That journey has been traversed by many, and there are many more who are going to traverse it. Today, I have the experts. I have the man on a mission. You know, I have our our Moses, who's now going to take us to that promised land and get us legit. He will let us know the do's and don'ts. He will let us know when to venture and what to do and what not to do. Mr. Lawrence Gatei, welcome to Africa Diaspora Connect. Lawrence Gatei, Esquire, immigration lawyer extraordinaire. Karibu, brother. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, well, uh, Mr. Kibadi. Welcome. You know what? It's, it's been a long time coming. You have, we have chatted uh, for, for maybe over a year now. And this topic of immigration, man, this, this is a hot one. This is a hot one. Um, tell us, walk us through your journey and how did you pick, you're a lawyer, why immigration? Why did you pick this particular journey to do what you do? Uh, it, it is indeed. Uh, first of all, let me say you're doing a heck of a good job, uh, Mr. Kipadi. Thank you. Uh, We're trying, uh, brother. We're the, trying. The, 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 this, this is a good uh, um, uh, way, not just to connect, but yeah. also uh, you know, to, to allow mm-hmm. us to dialogue on yes. uh, so, so many issues, particularly affecting uh, us here uh-huh. and connecting with the motherland. Yes. Uh, we still have families there, uh-huh. and uh, sometimes uh, they, they wonder what is going on out here. They do. You know, sometimes they feel like we're taking too long. Um, <laughs> but, of course, being in this country, it's not easy. It's not. Uh, as, as, as it may seem. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I congratulate you Thank for, you for so starting much. this Thank you. podcast. Thank you. Podcast. Thank you. Now, regarding immigration, yeah. as, as you rightly said, uh, I, I, I come from the motherland uh, myself. Uh-huh. I come from Kenya. Okay. Uh, I, I was born in Kenya. I was bred in Kenya. I went to high school in Kenya, participated in all those, uh, 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 you know, rigorous you know, being in high school in Kenya. Yeah, and of course, the fun of it. Of course, too. yeah. yeah. Uh, and then came here a few years after I graduated from high school. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I started uh, my uh, and you, you know, higher education college um you know back home uh then came here went to university of texas okay 
graduated from the University of Texas uh-huh. uh, in 1999. Uh-huh. Um, you know, studied uh, business, uh, economics, and uh, computer information systems. Oh, wow. wow. And then came over to uh, New England uh-huh. uh, in the Boston area, went to uh, Boston College. BC. Uh, Law school, BC. Oh, that's a serious. Uh, uh, that's a serious law school, right there, brother. Exactly, that master of double eagle. Oh yes, uh, eagles. So, mm-hmm. so, so I ended up, uh, you know, doubling JD and MBA. Um, Right. You know, I tell you this, when, when I graduated in 2004, there's not too much going on. Uh, the economy had just tanked, there were no jobs. Yeah. So I said, hey, you know, what's up with another year? You know, uh-huh. so, so I ended up spending another year in business school, okay. which, which I don't regret. Uh-huh. Uh, now, how did I start, uh, you know, immigration? immigration Actually, law, it was yeah. a happenstance. Uh-huh. I, I I never went to law school to practice immigration. I didn't even know what immigration law was. Uh, other than, of course, knowing that it was very, very hard for us being in this country. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what really, you know, immigration law was all about. Uh-huh. Up until I went to law school, my second year of law school, um, you know, we, we had, like, it's called uh, law law school uh, clinics whereby students participate yeah. uh, as as lawyers when they're still in law school. Uh-huh. Uh, and there was an opening there. Uh, I heard of an immigration law clinic, clinic. I went to a seminar. Okay. And boy, you know, when I heard uh, about immigration, immigration law, asylum, green cards, and uh-huh. I said, wow, I mean, this is yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is it. And of course, you know, there were so many issues. Um I mean, when I came here, I came here on F1 visa and I was a student since then. So uh-huh. what, 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 is, what is an F1 visa, as you say? I guess. What's Good. So, so F1 visa uh-huh. uh, is, it's, it's, uh, is a visa that uh, allow people, to, or people come here with to go to school. Uh-huh. So if you, if, if you come, let's in this case, this case from Kenya uh, to the United States with your you I-20. Know, to, 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 to study, uh-huh. Uh, you can apply for that visa. And what that entails is you get uh, enrolled uh, uh-huh. or, or admitted into a college of higher education uh, in, uh, in the United States. Uh-huh. Uh, they'll give you a document called I-20. Uh-huh. Uh, then you take that to the embassy. And of course, it's just some financial uh, wherewithal that you're going to be able to find your education in the United States. Then the visa you get is called F-1. That's the F-1 visa. So you come with that. Uh-huh. Uh, that F1 visa does not expire. Well, the visa itself expires, but when you come to the United States and you start going to school, you get what's called duration of status. M- many people uh, know this. Uh, the card called I-84 you get on the plane before you land. Yes. Uh, when you come here with F1 visa, that card does not indicate the time when that time expires. It says DS. Well, that means the duration of status. Okay, DS. And okay. what duration of status means is, long, is that as long as you are going to school, as long as you are enrolled uh, in, a, in, in, in any particular education program uh-huh. uh, and you're taking the requisite amount of credits. Yeah. If you are a graduate, normally 12 credits. Uh-huh. If you are a graduate student, normally three, uh-huh. I mean nine credits which translates to about three classes. Yep. As long as you're in school and you're renewing your I-20 every year, you can live here for 100 years. Really? And it may, will never expire. So it's not a visa. Oh, it's not sometimes visa. they forget. Visa only allows you to come in. It's the knocking. It's uh-huh. knocking on the door. Okay. Once the door gets open, uh-huh. vi- visa, the, 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 the uh, validity of your visa is pretty much gone. It's uh-huh. that white card, the I-94. Understood. That is what tells you how long you're going to be here. Because uh. I, I get a lot of uh, you know clients calling, they're like, well, I got my visa has not expired because they got a 10-year multi-entry visa. And then I say, well, wh- how long did, when did you get here? Well, I came here 10 months ago. Uh, what, 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 what did they tell you how long you're supposed to stay here? Uh-huh. I got this white card saying six months, but my visa is still good. Uh-huh. And I'm like, man, nah, no. it's not good. You know, wow. your other duration of stay is determined by that card, Understood. which is quite, quite critical. Dude. So you come in, and I'm glad we're starting from this way. Uh, you're talking about yes. your background when you first came in. Um, and then, and then um, so uh, to get an internship, for example, as an international yes. student, uh, right. how does that work? Now, so, uh, by law, 
students who come here to study uh-huh. in the United States uh, after you finish the the coursework, uh-huh. you know, two years or four years, depending on what uh, how long your program was going to take. Uh-huh. Uh, U.S. government provides something called optional practical training or OPT. OPT. Uh, what that allows is uh, a student who has graduated to engage uh, in some kind of an internship, okay. which is paid internship, uh-huh. really, uh-huh. so that they can get experience uh, of what they've studied before they go back to their home countries, yeah. you know, to, to work there. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, uh, you can also get an internship before, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's something called, um, uh, but there's an internship geared uh, uh, towards people who are in a particular program and you mm-hmm. can have that as part of the academic program. Okay. Uh, and of course you get credits out of it. That is not supposed to be paid internship okay. because it's part of the academic program. Okay. So it's only when you finish that you get uh, optional practical training uh-huh. that you can now engage in, an internship uh, or an employment uh-huh. that 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 can also allow uh, you know someone to get paid. Okay. So if you get paid when you are within a particular program, uh-huh. you violate your status. You violate your status. You violate your status unless, of course, you know you've you've been given uh, authorization by the immigration okay. to engage in employment, and that sometimes does happen. Kibani, uh-huh. uh, I don't know. Uh, whether you remember, there was one time uh, things were extremely bad in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, during the uh, um, tribal clashes, mm-hmm. uh, that was uh, the election of in, whatever yeah. in the no, in the 90s. Oh, in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. There were uh-huh. tribal clashes okay. when okay. you know uh-huh. President Moy, yes. former President Moy, was a president, uh-huh. and and so majority of the students from Kenya who were in the United States. Uh, you know, because of what had happened wow. in Kenya, they were not able to get, you know, financial uh, help yes. from their families back, back at home. Mm-hmm. So when someone is facing, someone is already in the United States, they're enrolled in, a, in a, an academic program. Mm-hmm. After a year of being in the program, if they hit some economic uh, hardship, um, hardship mm-hmm. they can actually apply. People don't know this. They can actually apply uh, to get authorized, to get the right authorization to be able to work in the United States while still going to school. Uh-huh. And also what that does is that it lowers the amount of credit someone is supposed to take. Oh, really? Yes, yes. And, and so some of us were able to take advantage of that. You know, so instead of having now 12 credits, which requires you to be in school pretty much every day those, and every those, hour. Those are four classes uh, right there, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you get that lowered to maybe about uh, half of that six wow. credits, oh, wow. and half of that time you engage in part-time employment. Ah, so now this kind of ties with so- something that we talk about a lot: asylum. So let right. me just ask, how do you qualify for asylum? How does that work? Because you're talking about skirmishes, ethnic, whatever, whatever. How do you qualify exactly. for asylum? Uh, exactly. Status? All right. So, so asylum is is basically protection from harm that might be inflicted on a person if they were to go back. Okay. Now, by definition, harm is not necessarily harm. It can also be fear of harm. Fear. And it does not have to be government instigating it. It could be a private person. Uh, it could be a person that the government is not able to control or the government so is not minute. willing my, to my control. My neighbor is threatening me. I can file for asylum. What do you mean? Exactly. Exactly. What? Exactly. Yes. Yes. So let's say you have a neighbor, uh-huh. uh, you know, who, because of some characteristics that you possess, uh-huh. is harming you or threatening to harm you. And I'll give you some examples. Is is threatening to harm you, and the government itself is not able to protect you. Okay. You can, you do qualify to apply for asylum, for asylum in the United States. Now. Well, let me first of all start with when that happens. Uh-huh. Uh, a person qualifies for asylum if they've been in the United States within one year. In other words, uh, the, the, it, to be affirmatively eligible uh, to apply for asylum, you have to apply within one year of your arrival in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Now, that does not mean that you cannot apply afterwards. So let's say you've been here, and then when you're here in the U.S., something happens back at home that sort of triggers that fear of mm-hmm. you going back. Mm-hmm. 
So there's an exception that can, that, that's granted to people who are applying after one year okay. of being in the U.S. Uh-huh. Okay. So people should not shy just because you've been here for 15 years that and something happens back home that threatens you uh, that you cannot apply. You still can do that even after one year. Okay. Now, what fee are we talking about here? So there are five categories that are called statutory grounds uh, of characteristics uh-huh. um you know that 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 the harm or so-called they're called nexus also you know that that this harm okay. may be inflicted by this particular person again could the government could be a non-government actor uh seeking to harm you because of at least or uh, one of one the of five, five grounds one of five. Okay. Uh-huh. and these are religious religious uh-huh. so let's say let's say your neighbor doesn't like the fact that you had a krishna Oh, oh, you're a Christian, oh, or you're Muslim, or a Muslim, pa- or a particular group yeah. that wants to harm you because they don't like the way Mr. Kebadi worships. Uh-huh. And the government is not willing to intervene. Or able, or exactly, yeah. able to protect you. You may be able to qualify to apply for asylum. So, uh-huh. l- religious belief is one of them. Okay. Second is membership in something called a social group. Uh, what is a social group? Well, there is no particular definition of what a social group is, mm-hmm. uh, but you know the, gov- the, 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 the the case law or the judges, the courts have been able to sort of define what that may entail. Like a Again, there's no particular. Is that like a sect or something like that? Is it a sect? Yes, yeah, so a, a social group uh-huh. c- could be something like a family. You may be ca- you may come from a family that is quite prominent, and and wow. you and someone is seeking to harm you. Because of you being a member of that prominent family, You're a who's so who. familial relationship could also be oh, wow. a member, I mean, a, a group You're being that targeted. is protected. Oh wow! Okay, exactly. And a group also can be a tribe. For example, again, going back to tribal clashes in Kenya, uh-huh. most of the people who were able to apply for asylum in Kenya during that time they were members of a certain or some certain groups. It could have been Kikuyu. Most of the Kikuyus actually who are in the Rift Valley. Uh, uh, were able to do that when they were here. It could also be Kalenjin. It could also be a little idea. It doesn't matter, but a tribal affiliation is also a group. Understood. Gender is also another one. Uh, if someone is targeting you because you are men or because you are female. Like, for example, some countries, homosexuals are being murdered. Like homosexual, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or FGM. We've yeah. had a lot of FGM cases, uh-huh. female circumcision. Uh-huh. So, anyway, so that's yeah. a group. Ah. Uh-huh. Wow. All right. Okay. But again, you know, I don't want to restrict, you know, again, what we normally tell people is that, you know, when you go to a lawyer, they may be able to determine whether your group, you know, uh, sort of fits in that category. Okay. Another example for a group uh, is, you know, people who are, let's say, opposed to certain uh, groupings. Like, for example, let's say in Kenya, you have gangs. Mm-hmm. And and you, Mr. Kibazi, you're opposed to gang and someone is trying to force you to join a gang. He's, he said, no, I'm not going to join. Mungeki, Mungeki is one of them. In, <laughs> okay. in, you know? okay. So, so yeah. you're forced to join Mungeki yeah. uh, and you don't want to. Uh-huh. Uh, so you are a member of a group that is opposing Mungeki and its activities. Understood. All right. So so that's the second. Another, another uh, um, wow. group that is protected uh, or another ground of protection is race. Okay. Or nationality. Uh-huh. So race and nationality, those are two different things. Okay. So let's say, for example, you come from a particular nationality. Mm-hmm. Uh, if let's say you're living in South Africa and you're Kenyan and some people are targeting you because you're Kenyan, that's a nationality Xenophob- that you cannot share. Xenophobia, right? Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, we have a lot of Kenyans in, in South Africa yeah. uh, or most African countries uh-huh. who are getting targeted because of, of the diaspora aspect. Understood. The last one... Uh-huh is political opinion. Now, uh, people, people make me, well, it's just because they don't know what that means. A political opinion does not necessarily mean that you have a particular political view of a particular uh, 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 issue. Wow. Someone can impute a political opinion. So, for example, yeah. again, going back to Kenya, mm-hmm. uh, if let's say, you know, here you are, Mr. Kibadi, and someone is telling you, especially back in the old days mm-hmm. when, when Kano was Mama and Baba. Mm-hmm. You know, someone is saying, Mr. Kibadi, uh, well, you better join Kano. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I, 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 I don't need to. I mean, I, 
I'm okay, I don't need to. Uh-huh. And then they impute that you, by refusing to join that particular political party, you're actually part of the opposition. Understood. You know, uh, so you don't have to have political opinion, but if someone is imputing a political opinion yeah. on you and they seek to harm you because of that, whether you have it or not, mm-hmm. whatever their motive is, does not matter. You do qualify to for, apply for, for asylum. asylum. So if you don't sign that BBI signature, maybe you could qualify for asylum. Also. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Seriously, right? Yes. So, so, yes. Uh, so, what's the pro? Like in 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 in, in like so asylum? Is it like uh, when you get an asylum? Is it a visa? How so? You get a, you granted asylum. Do you automatically right. get your green card, or how does that work? So, no. So so once you get asylum, yeah. Like first of all, that's a hallelujah moment. Asylum is 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 um, uh, guaranteed pretty much indefinitely. Uh huh. So it allows someone to have a refugee status. Your refugee. Okay, or asylee status. Asylee status, uh-huh. refugee status. They all come within the rubrics of Refugee Act. Understood. But, the, but those are two different things. A refugee yeah. is someone who has been brought here to apply specifically for uh, asylum. So, for example, what happened in Somalia, the U.S. government went over, evacuated some people, brought them to the U.S., uh, when they brought them to the U.S. for that particular reason, because they were being harmed, they came as refugees. But if you come here on your own on a visa and then you apply for asylum, you become an asylee. Understood. Okay, but once once you get that status is approved, it's indefinite. Up until though, things change back home for better. So let's say you are here, you get asylum. Five years later the harm for which you feared uh, yeah. is no longer in existence, uh-huh. U.S. government can take back asylee status. However, you can apply for permanent resident or green card once While you've had your asylum for one year. After a year, you can apply for a green card. So okay. we always tell people after one year, get on that application, apply for it. Quick. No, quickly. Uh, once you apply for that, you are permanent resident, you are still asylee, though. Mm-hmm. so you cannot go back to Kenya where you've been protected from going. You can't go there. You, you can't go there on holiday. You can't. You cannot. <laughs> you can go. You can go and meet your families in Uganda, or, but not Kenya. Or anybody, I, I no, whatever country, country you, you came from, asylum. Okay, yeah, yeah. Even even sense. after you get your green card, ah, even when you get your green card, time, exactly. People forget this. What? Once you get your green card based on asylee status. Uh-huh. You are still a asylee ah, yeah. up until you become a US US citizen, citizen five years later. And once you're a citizen, you can travel anywhere. Once you're a citizen, now you're covered by US law. You're going there using US passport. Wow. You can go back to Kenya, no problem. So a common thing that happens to us is we, over, we overextend our stay. Yes. And, and that's a vast majority of us. We call it like it is. Right. Um, for those folks who have overextended their stay and, quote-unquote, illegal, I hate that term, aliens, whatever that means, right. yes. um, there are various ways of getting back online. Yes. You know, you could get married. I've heard right. of that angle. Uh, yes. To a U.S. citizen. Uh, right. I understand if you have kids, once they turn of majority, 21 years old, I believe if it's a U.S. citizen, your child yes. can apply for yourself. Right. Can you give us avenues of how to get back on status? Uh, yes. You know, just give us a little overview on that if you've overstayed your status. Uh, like, Exa- exactly. Uh-huh. So, so um, one of them, <clears throat> like you said, is if someone gets married. Mm-hmm. So you came over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Years later, you fall in love with an American citizen. It doesn't actually have to be an American citizen. It can even be someone with a green card. Green card. You fall, you fall, exactly. You fall in love with that particular person. And wait, wait, course, wait. You know, you green are, card? Even a green card. They can petition for a spouse. So uh, if it's a green card, even, even if you overstayed your visa, you still can apply for a green card through that relationship. Now, of course, there's another process. You have to apply for a waiver to be forgiven. But at some point, uh, your green card spouse will become a U.S. citizen at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, so if that, if that, of course, changes, then the process changes. 
All right. In other words, you will not have to apply for a waiver for being here unlawfully or having ex of ex you know extended uh, okay. overstayed your uh -huh. visa. Uh -huh. But if you get married to your citizen, yeah. there's an automatic blanket forgiveness of that period of time uh, that you have been here without um, proper documentation. Is there a penalty? So uh, there's no penalty. Okay. Even actually, even even engaging in unauthorized employment. Unauthorized employment is whereby you're getting employed without a work permit yeah. or authorization by immigration. Uh -huh. Once you get married to a US citizen, uh, you get a lot of perks. One of them being uh, you don't get penalized for working unlawfully. You don't get penalized for being here after your visa expires. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot that you get. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you also you, you stayed married for three years, after three years, you're also going to apply for citizenship. Mm -hmm. If you're still married to a US citizen and mm -hmm. you're in what's called married to, you know, in other words, you're still living together. Understood. So that's that that that's one way. Uh -huh. The other way, like you said, was when you, if you have children who are born in the US mm -hmm. uh, or who are your citizen, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, they are um, these children are eighteen or uh, twenty one years of, of age. Is it twenty one or is it eighteen? Is it eighteen or is it twenty one? It, it is it it, it is twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. If they're applying for parents, mm -hmm. but if and we've seen that this, by the way, mm -hmm. if there's a young man or a young woman who is a US citizen, uh, in college they meet a young Kenyan young woman or man, uh, you know, they met in high school because this particular Kenyan young child was born here when he or she was a child. The spouse does not have to be 21. Over 18 is enough. Okay. So if it is a US citizen applying for a spouse, cut off is 18 years. If it's for parents, cut of age, it's 21. 21, 21. understood. Right. There's also another way, uh -huh. uh, and we've seen this happen a lot. If a person has been here uh, for more than 10 years in the U.S., uh -huh. and they don't have any criminal record, okay. uh, but it turns out that they have children who are born in the U.S., or they have green cards, these children, or parents who are U.S. citizen or have the green cards, and that particular person for whatever reason, find themselves in deportation proceedings, uh -huh. they can apply for a green card on their own in immigration court. It's called, there's a process called cancellation of removal. It's like some a sort of an amnesty, if you will, okay. uh, but you have to be in immigration court and you have to have been here for at least 10, 10 years. years. And no criminal record right. whatsoever. No criminal records, good moral character. Good okay. moral. And we've had a lot of people, um, uh, you know, who find themselves, and I'll tell you how sometimes people get, get themselves in migration court, who finds themselves in migration court. Yeah. Uh, but again, someone has to have been here for more than 10 years before they got to immigration court. How do you find yourself in immigration court? Exactly. So one of them is good or getting arrested by ICE. Yeah, those ICE men. <laughs> You're, you're, you're driving, you get stopped by a, a local police, the local uh -huh. police finds out. How do you oh. react? How do you react? What, what, what do you have working for you? So I get pulled over. How, what am I, yes. what, what can I do? What, how, do how do you deal with that? Well, the, the, the first thing is that yeah. if you get pulled over, immigration cannot pull you over. Immigration they, will they, not pull they, you they, over, they, no. They, unless, of course, they have a warrant for your arrest. Okay. Only the local police. Okay. Or state police. police. Okay, police pulls me over. Uh -huh. If you get pulled over, uh, because there's something wrong with your car, or, or maybe you run around it, whatever, whatever, whatever the case happens, may be. Yeah, you've only been put over for that particular purpose. That particular police officer is not allowed, is not authorized to ask you and get a, a response regarding your immigration status. Now, of course, they do that all the time. They do it. Do you know why they do that? Why do they do that? Because they hear your accent. So, that, so, so, even if you have a driver license. The second question is, oh, by the way, are you a U.S. citizen? Well, they're not supposed to ask that, but they do anyway. So, How do we respond? You, 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 you can say, officer, I don't believe I have to respond to that. You oh, stopped me for... so glad you're saying this. You stopped me for uh, a traffic violation. I have, now, you, of course, yeah. sometimes the officer might say, well, okay, let me go back to my car. I'll, you run a red light. You know, know what they do when they go back to their car? What do they do? Oh, they call ICE. They call ICE. So they say, well, I got someone I stopped there. I believe he or she is not a U.S. He's got a funny name. His name is Obama. 
It's just, it's just ridiculous, <laughs> you know, just ridiculous. But that is laughing over time. here. <laughs> Unfortunately, of course, one, once ice come, yeah. uh, not too much you can do at that point. Once but ice in, comes. What I tell people is, you know, always be polite to a police officer. But when they ask you questions regarding your status, be upfront, tell them, officer, you're stopping for this particular reason. Deal with me uh, for that. Uh, Absolutely. in regard to this particular Exactly. Reason. Yes. Oh, man, this is honestly African Diaspora Connect. We're learning. We are learning. This is really vital. So we gave us all those different options of how we can regain our status. Um, let's, let's, let's venture into some other avenues that are just probing uh, day in, night out. Uh, right. This whole Trump presidency, what has it done from an immigration perspective? All right. What has it done? How, how bad has it been uh, since he took the helm? And by the way, I think Obama deported more people, but I don't know. But what has this administration done uh, from an uh, immigration perspective? Yeah, well, not a whole lot, really. Um, really? Okay. The, the, the policies that uh, the Trump administration uh, pursued, of course, uh -huh. aggressively, uh -huh. They all started uh, during Obama's presidency. Okay. Now, of course, media say something different. You hear all kinds of stuff. But, but those are people really who are just on a, pol a, a score, political, uh, I mean, make political score there. Uh -huh. uh, but the law has not changed. Okay. The same migration same. handbook law is, is still the same. Okay. You know, that, that, that has not changed. Okay. I only have it here. Okay. Um, okay. But what changes, though, for the most part, uh -huh. Uh, the, well, they call the, the regulations. Uh -huh. uh, regulations are processes or procedures of, for example, applying for uh, the things that you have to do when you're applying for a green card. Yeah. We've seen uh, more of a tightening of the news, uh, so to speak, yeah. uh, regarding these particular rules. For example, right now there's something called uh, um, you know, public benefits rule. Mm -hmm. When you're applying for a green card, Mr. Kibabi, mm -hmm. uh, whoever who is petitioning for you, that particular person is supposed to show that they can sponsor you also financially, not just a green card, mm -hmm. but also financially. And all they need to show are three years taxes, tax returns. Uh, and for the most part, immigration will take that. They will not question that. Is there a minimum income you need to be making? Uh, yes, it all depends on, uh, has to be above, uh, or 125 percent above the poverty level. What is that? Uh, so, so let's say, for example, this person, uh, it's, I'll give an example of a child fighting for their mother, mm -hmm. and this child is not married. Mm -hmm. If, if, if the child does not have a dependent, in other words, they, they're not married, they don't have any children that they're supporting, mm -hmm. that child really only is. Only need to make about thirty thousand. Okay. A year. Understood. Right? If they have a child, it goes by five thousand. So it'll be thirty-five instead of thirty. Uh -huh. If they have a spouse, the same thing. Understood. So we're not talking about a whole lot. So, of when, money so if your child is going to sponsor a parent, the child has to be working. It's not a, the, your, your child has to be working. Is that what you're saying? The, well, the, the child has to initially show that uh -huh. they can support the parent, uh -huh. but okay. Because the child may also not be working, the child may be disabled, the child may be a student. Exactly. The law does give an exception uh -huh. uh, and allows the child to get some, some, another person called a joint sponsor. Okay. Uh, so if the child is not making enough or not making money at all and uh -huh. has never filed tax returns, the child can join in, get someone, it could be a friend, it could be a colleague at work, it could be another family member who must be either a green card holder or a U.S. citizen. Wow. Okay. Both now taxes can be used to show that, they you know, there's finances or financial Understood. background to yeah, support yeah, 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 the yeah. mother or the father. Understood. Now, what has happened, though, uh -huh. uh, is that uh, the new rules, uh, which are now tighter, uh -huh. shows that in addition to the petitioner showing that they have the finances to support the mother or the father who they're applying for, the spouse uh -huh. they're applying for, now you got to show that you have never received any public benefits. Mass health, you know, free care or housing, free housing. Understood. Um, so now those things now are coming to bear. Understood. You know, so what I've been telling people is that be very, very careful yeah. uh, when, you know, uh, when, when you're applying for some of these uh, benefits. Yeah. In Massachusetts, though, under Massachusetts law, uh, you know, you can have um, 
uh, you know, imagine say mass health, you know, yeah. that just that even nothing happens. Understood. A, a doctor uh, is mandated to treat you regardless. Anyway, Understood. we're not talking about the emergency. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you yeah. know, but but it's a big item thing. So, okay, well, you're getting mass health, you know, so that you can be going for your physicals and then sort of these sort yeah. of big uh, health uh, issues. But yeah. even if it's emergency, you are still okay. Wow. And uh-huh. and that does not cover people who are applying or green card based on asylum. They're exempted from public uh, benefit rule. Uh, understood. Other people who've also been uh, exempted are people who are applying for green card. Yeah. And this is important, Kebali, because most people don't know this. Uh-huh. A lot of um, foreign nationals or immigrants who come here and they get married, a lot of them get abused. Okay. By their U.S. citizen spouses or yeah. by their green card spouses. Yeah. I've had a lot of those cases. Understood. People sometimes they fear going, you know, coming forward. United States protect those people under a law called VAWA, Violence Against Women Act. And even though it says women, it actually does apply to spouses and children uh, uh, who, who, you know, also been abused. So I'm going to have to have you back. This is so wide. There are a couple of things we're winding down. I know Ben is looking at me. It's almost that time here. This is so varied. Uh, I want to talk about DACA. I wanted to yes. bring up uh, DACA. Can you just, in, 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 a, in a snippet, DACA, DACA. All right. In a snippet. Yeah. So, so, so DACA, which is Deferred Admission of Childhood Arrivals, that's yeah. what that means. Yes. Uh, this is the executive order that uh, former President Obama issued uh, during his second term yeah. Yeah. that tends to protect Children who, are, who came here, people who came here when they were children, when they're under 16. Yeah. But they must have come here uh, on or before July, uh, uh, June, sorry, June of 2017. So by June 2017, they were in the U.S. Yeah. And they were under 16. Understood. At the time when they came to the U.S. There's also a cap of age, which is they must have been uh, under 31 years. Okay. By July, by June, two thousand and seventeen. We're going to have okay. a part two. We're going to have a part two because yes. we're running out of time today. I do have a chat group that I'd like you to join. It's called the Africa Diaspora Podcast, and All I'm right. telling you, you're going to be a hit because we have a lot of questions, brother. Folks, um, this is the man we need to know, Lawrence. This information, these nuggets, uh, cannot be covered in one show. Uh, there's so many things. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate messages now because i haven't covered so much because this is such a varied topic we're going to have you back and when you air when you come on the air i am going to have you join this chat group you can also be able to assist with the questions and trust me everyone is viewing your number uh what is the name of your business again what's what's the name of your business immigration and business law group immigration and business law group yes this is the man right there your phone number is six one seven seven eight one seven eight one four one zero four one zero Three two eight four. Africans Diaspora Connect. We're hearing it right here, live and direct. This is the man to know immigration, our rights, what to do and what not to do. We love being here. Lawrence, you're going to be back. Guys, please subscribe. I always ask, subscribe, like the shows, share. We're going some places with folks like these. You know we're getting somewhere. I'm your host. Always loving you. My brother, Asante Sana. Karibu. All right, man. Cheers, man. Talk to you. Take care, man. Thanks, Take man. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Now. Thank you. All right. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.